Hello, everyone. Um, welcome today. Um, thank you guys for uh, joining us for the virtual college experience for all North and South Carolina um, schools. Uh, Pranam by the, the Carolina Association of College Registrars and Missions Officer um, at StriveScan. Um, I just want to go over a few housekeeping rules um, before we get started. Um, so for all of these students um, that are on today, um, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters. Um, they'll be able to see them and they can then address your questions. Um, your camera and microphone um, are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, um, but definitely utilize that function to ask questions. Um, this is just one of the many sessions that are happening um, and the, our presentation if you guys want to go to any other presentations, just visit that website on the screen, thecacro.org, and you can see all the other presentations coming on. Um, additionally, this presentation will be recorded, um, so if you want to view this later, it will be available in about a week on the same website, um, which is cacro.org. Um, so I now turn it over to the presenters, um, Bobby, and then I uh, can go ahead and get started for y'all. Absolutely. Uh, so my name is uh, Bobby Avison. I'm an admissions counselor, or Robert Avison. That's usually where you will find me on the website. An admissions counselor here with VCU. I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen really quickly. I think I'm going to stop the other screen sharing. That's my fault for that. So I'll go ahead and present this presentation I do have for you. Um, just a couple of things, really general information and just kind of history on VCU. We have one of the more confusing logos, I like to say, because of that 1838 date. That is actually when the medical college first opened its doors. However, our technical founding date is actually 1968. That is when the Richmond Professional Institute and the Medical College of Virginia were merged into one um, larger university. So if you kind of think of VCU, we are right in the heart of the city of Richmond. Um, we are a large university, but we have two main campuses. Um, the Monroe Park campus, and that is where the majority of undergraduate classes are taken, and the Monroe Park campus as well. Um, so those are more pre-health professional classes, not as much undergraduate. It's actually the second largest hospital in Virginia. Um, the only exception we really do have to that are if students are in the clinical lab studies, nursing, or uh, radiation science programs. You might be taking some classes at um, the Medical College of Virginia. However, that is about two miles east downtown, um, east of the Monroe Park campus, the main campus. And I'll just kind of talk a little bit more about transportation later on. I am going to share this really quick video for you guys. It was a different setting. It was urban and there was a lot going on and I knew I wanted to find my place. I know it's big in a lot of ways, but VCU is just a collection of small communities and you can be a part of any and as many of those communities as you want. Everyone's so welcoming and nice and that's what I love about it. I love the urban community and I just love being around people that's striving for success. So it's so different than anywhere else that I've lived. People are so open-minded and it's just awesome. I love the population here. I think everyone is really accepting. You meet interesting people every single day. Different walks of life. Someone will always make your day here. There's so many things to do. I've lived in the suburbs my whole life, so I thought coming to a new city would be a nice change of pace. Like a breathing, breathing campus, breathing city. I just fell in love. There's so many different places to explore in Richmond, and I honestly feel like I'm not just studying at VCU. I feel like I'm studying in the city of Richmond. Art was always just kind of a hobby of mine. And then when I toured VCU, it really opened my eyes to seeing like, wow, a lot of people can take this passion and make it a real thing that they can do with their lives and their career. There is a niche for everyone in any major you choose, in any activity that you choose. The faculty team here are always willing to go the extra mile to help the students. That's probably why I want to continue doing what I do. I'm a lifelong learner and I want to continue to impact others in the future and in the long run. I come from a very diverse background myself. I speak five different languages and I knew that I could flourish as a student in this university and contribute. 
it really does do a great job of leveraging the diversity and the talent and the richness of the community that attends BCU and the community around us. We're in a booming city that has its potential to explore what BCU has to offer because I promise you, you will come out of it with more than you can All right. So just a little bit about BCU. Um, we are a large university. Uh, we have a little bit over 30,000 students enrolled. About 24,000 of those students are going to make up our undergraduate population. However, even though we do have that large campus population, we do have an average classroom size of about 27 students per classroom. We also have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Now how that is going to break down, especially your freshman year, if you are taking more prerequisite classes, you might be in those larger classroom sizes. About, um, they tend to cap off around 200 students. However, once you get more involved into your major related classes, that's where those smaller classroom sizes are going to really come into play and our 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio really does give you great resources in terms of research opportunities which i'll go through later on in the presentation um, but you do kind of get that mix of uh, personalized individualized attention because we do have that large amount of faculty however um, you do still get the large campus feel as well in terms of what we look for um, from our students and just kind of a big thing this year, we are gonna be test optional for the majority of our programs and I'll kind of go over that later on, but just wanted to make a note of that here just because I'm gonna explain um, a couple of test score requirements or test score, what we kind of look for in terms of our test score range, but usually what we look for in general from our students is around a 3.3 3 to 4.0 GPA. And if you do turn in the test score, it's about a 1080 to 1270 SAT score and about a 22 to 27 ACT score. Now, that is not the only thing we look for. We are a holistic review process. And those ranges are our middle 50%, which means that is not the minimum. There's no minimum that you need in order to apply to VCU. What we're going to also look for is our um, GPA trend is your GPA trend. We're going to look for letters of recommendation, what you're involved in both in and outside of the classroom, and basically everything on your application that you include to us. It's something that we're going to take into account and we're going to look at when reviewing an applicant. Now there are uh, some different standards for different programs or different admission standards, I mean. Um, College of Engineering, for example, they tend to want to have students with a stronger math and science background as well. Uh, so you might, that's something to consider when selecting classes in high school, and they just want to see somebody doing well there. Our school of business, they will also want to see students a little bit, um, they're going to look a little heavier in the math section also. Uh, so those are kind of two things to keep in mind when applying to VCU. And then in terms of programs that we do have to offer, so VCU, we do have 68 different majors. So there's a lot of things that you can get involved in. Um, we're also a top three research institution in the state of Virginia. So last year, we had $310 million allocated uh, to sponsored research. And there's a lot of students, I'll kind of go over that uh, return on investment later on, but a lot of, the majority of our students are not just in the classroom the whole time, they are actually in their field of study um, and doing a couple of research initiatives. And I'll list a few of them um, in our College of Engineering, for example, uh, students have been working on drones that administer life-saving medicine around the Richmond area. Um, in our life sciences department, um, just because we do have the James River, they worked on revitalizing the sturgeon population in the James River, which is really cool. Our VCUR program tends to have uh, fashion shows. Uh, 
and there's a lot of hands-on things that our School of the Arts students are doing. We have our Da Vinci Center, which is something that is really cool. It's kind of collaborative between multiple majors, and they have programs such as our certificate program in entrepreneurship and product innovation. And so those are just a few things, but our students are very involved and very passionate about what they're doing, which is really cool to see. BC um, does a great job of fostering those opportunities. We also have our service learning students who have completed over 70,000 hours in service-based um, uh, service learning. Uh, we have um, uh, 15 different programs in residence and living learning communities that is basically uh, students are paired and they will kind of live um, based on their living situation. They will live near people and that's going to be based on academic interests. That can be based on social interests, just kind of different uh, similar interests to those students. So that can really help, especially um, not having to go across campus to find somebody who's in, for example, the same classes as you or in the same clubs, organizations as you as well. We do have seven programs uh, that are unique to Virginia too. So there's a lot of things that you can get involved in at BCU. In terms of our student support services that we do have on campus, um, we have academic advising. And our academic advising coming in your first year, you are required to meet with an academic advisor at least four times throughout your first year. They do an excellent job of making sure that you're enrolling in the correct classes. They do a great job of checking in on you and just kind of being that guiding factor. And you will have an academic advisor throughout four years of your time at BCU or throughout uh, your time at BCU. We also have our Campus Learning Center. Um, they uh, have tutoring, and that will be usually either by walk-in or by appointment. There's been a lot more Zoom meetings, especially now. We also do have our new student and family orientation programs right before students um, actually do get on campus. They will have those programs that will kind of orient them to campus. And then we have our career services. Our career services do, does an excellent job, not only helping our students get jobs and careers afterwards, but they will help our students get part-time jobs, internships, on-campus jobs. They will also help with resume reviews. They will conduct mock interviews. Um, and there will also be career fairs where different prospective uh, employers will look uh, specifically at BCU students. And the cool thing is we do have career fairs also based on what program you're studying. So a lot of those individual programs will actually have companies come in and look for students within that field. In terms of a couple of different scholarship or um, application deadlines. These are super important. The first one, November 1st, uh, as long as a student applies by November 1st, they will be automatically eligible for either the presidential, provost, or dean's merit-based scholarship. Um, all they would have to do is apply to the university, make sure that you do get your official transcripts by that November 1st deadline, and you're going to automatically be eligible for it them. And now those are not the only scholarships available to students. Um, on our financial aid website, you'll actually be able to see all of the third party and merit-based scholarships that are all of the third party departmental and merit-based scholarships that we do have to offer. Um, however, these are the easiest to apply just because again, you have to apply before November 1st. Um, November 15th, this is our Honors College Guaranteed Admission Program deadline. What the Honors College Guaranteed Admission Program basically is, if you are a student in the pre-health field, um, you can apply to this program, and it's going to be a separate application. I'll go over that a little bit later on. But if you are accepted into that program, 
they are going to save your spot in the Medical College of Virginia afterwards, as long as you maintain the requirements to get into the Medical College of Virginia. So you would still have to take the MCAT, everything like that, but as long as you make those requirements, you have your spot saved. Now, say if you apply to the Guaranteed Admissions Program and the decision isn't favorable or you decide not to apply to the program, do not worry. Um, you can still come to VCU as a pre-health major, or you're, you can be on the pre-health track. I apologize, it's not a major program, you would major in uh, something else. And you would be on the pre-health track. Um, you would still complete the requirements to get in the Medical College of Virginia. It's just students who are in the Guaranteed Admissions Program have their spots saved for MCV, and so it's a little bit of a safety net for those students. January 15th, that is the regular decision deadline. Um, that's the priority deadline, so if you apply by January 15th, you will have your decision back by or before April 1st. Does not necessarily mean uh, that you have to wait until April 1st, but um, you are guaranteed to have a decision by April 1st. Now, say if you waited until a little bit afterwards to apply, that is okay. We are rolling admission. Um, so we will still review your application. We will try to get you a decision back as soon as possible. However, we don't have a guaranteed time frame for when we are going to get that decision back. So that is just something to keep in mind there. February 1st, that is the Honors College Freshman Priority Deadline. It's pretty similar to the um, regular decision deadline. They still are rolling admissions, even though um, I would still encourage you to apply by that point. Um, also, the Honors College, it is open to all majors. So it is not like the Guaranteed Admission Program where you just have to be in a pre-health um, program. With the Honors College, a couple of benefits will include usually priority housing, um, priority scholarship consideration. There are scholarships through the uh, Honors College that students would be eligible for. Um, also, priority class registration. Students tend to register for classes at least two weeks in advance um, when they're in the Honors College, so that is just kind of something that's very beneficial to our students. Um, you will have an honors minor, and they tend to be more conversational based classes, tend to be smaller classes as well. Um, so that's something that's very nice for our students. And then you would also be graduating with honors, so it does look a little bit more prestigious. They do have different admission standards, and I'll kind of go over those later on. Um, but that is an option for students that want to apply. Um, in terms of all our admissions deadlines, we are not, we do not have any binding decisions and technically no early action. We are going to be rolling admissions for the process. Um, the other deadline, and for some reason it's not listed there, but just keep in mind, March 1st is our financial aid priority deadline. What that basically means, um, I, I would encourage students to apply for financial aid. I would encourage any student to apply for financial aid. Um, if you go to FAFSA.gov, that is where you will find the, that financial aid application. Anybody can apply for it, even though it is a need-based program, uh, you can still go ahead and fill out the application. Please do so. Uh, that application actually opens up on October 1st, so definitely something in mind to keep on your radar um, if 100 admissions counselors haven't told you that already. Um, definitely super important, and I would try to fill that out as soon as possible if you can. Then in terms of actually applying to VCU, um, so for freshman students, you will apply through the Common Application at commonapp.org. Um, for that, we will uh, require a counselor assessment, usually 
um, a letter of recommendation is fine. And then there's gonna be an essay portion that's automatically generated on the common application. If you are transferring into ECU, uh, you will apply via the electronic application on our website. And if you have over 30 graded college credits after you have uh, graduated from high school, then uh, you would only need to send in your college transcript. If you are under 30 graded college credits, you would need to send in your high school transcript as well. Um, a couple of different applications to keep in mind. Um, so you are going to, if you're a freshman, you're going to fill out the common application no matter what, but if you want to apply for the Honors College or the Guaranteed Admissions Program, after you fill out the common application, you will go to their website, um, the Honors College uh, website. For the Honors College, I believe in terms of requirements, um, they are just going to have a um, second essay portion and then for guaranteed admissions, there's usually an essay portion as well as a interview um, uh, portion. So it is gonna be kind of conducted in stages. Um, and then in terms of uh, standardized test score, we are gonna be score optional. The only program uh, that does that it includes for merit-based scholarships as well, so still apply by November 1st in order to be eligible for those merit-based scholarships. The only exception to that is going to be our guaranteed admissions program through the Honors College. Uh, they are gonna still look for test scores. However, if you are unable to take any test scores due to COVID, um, make sure that you email our Honors College and let them know uh, before applying. So they definitely still want to make sure that every student does have the advantage of applying to the Honors College. Um, finally, it does say social security number uh, is optional. I would strongly recommend that for financial aid. That is how and uh, that will have the option to put that on your application. That is basically how we um, are able to tell who is receiving that financial aid and make sure that you're getting that financial aid um, money as well. Um, another thing to note, they do have to be official transcripts that we see, official high school transcripts. Uh, you can send them through Parchment, Naviance, or National Clearinghouse if you wanna send them electronically. Um, or you can send them through the mail as well, as long as they are official copies and they are sealed copies. And then if you are applying to our School of the Arts program, if it is our fine arts program, um, you are going to uh, submit a portfolio with about 12 to 16 different pieces of your artwork. If it is a Performing arts program, there will be audition deadlines. I believe that's gonna be through Zoom as well. Um, and then if it is um, art history or cinema, then there's gonna be a separate essay portion. I would encourage you to go to our arts website if you are interested in applying to an arts program because they do have different admissions requirements. Um, and the reason being is uh, our, we will have art admissions counselors. I would not be able to make a decision on an art student. I am nowhere artistically ta talented um, enough to do that, uh, but they would be able to make an admissions decision on those art students. Um, and then in terms of other programs, um, for example, our College of Engineering, our School of Business and our Arts program that do have different admission standards. I would recommend putting on your common application those programs directly because say, if, for example, um, you are applying to the College of Engineering and the decision from them is not favorable, you would automatically be reviewed for regular admission into uh, VCU, into the university. Um, and you can come in as an undeclared major. You do not have to officially declare your major until spring semester, your sophomore year, 
So there is no harm in actually applying for those programs. And once you are an undeclared major, there are ways to enroll into the programs and your academic advising will help you with that. Um, and then in terms of uh, just kind of VCU and our Richmond in general. So we are right in the heart of the city of Richmond, Virginia. Richmond is an awesome place to live. It is about two hours away from everything I like to say, two hours away from the beach, two hours, hours away from the mountains, two hours away from North Carolina. It says two hours away from DC. With traffic to DC, that two hours um, can sometimes vary, but we are still very close to DC as well. And then in terms of just kind of, it is very outdoor friendly. We have over 500 acres of James River Park system. A couple of examples, Browns Island, Belle Isle, two very popular places for hiking, whitewater rafting, um, rock climbing. There's also festivals and concerts. Well, hopefully there will be festivals and concerts uh, pretty shortly here again, but there, traditionally there have been. Um, Richmond is very bike friendly. There are very many museums to check out as well. And we have eight Fortune 500 companies headquartered in the city, 11 Fortune 1000 companies, and we are very small business friendly. So again, there's that opportunity for our students to really take advantage of living in the city. A couple of other things, um, we, VCU is a part of the GRTC bus system. And that is an awesome program that is free for students and it will take you anywhere, basically anywhere around the city. Um, we also, do have a train that's about 10 minutes away from the Monroe Park campus. I will run and that does have uh, routes to North Carolina as well. And we do have an airport that is located within 20 minutes away uh, from the university as well. Then in terms of safety on campus, so BC we do have uh, 99 sworn police officers on campus. That is actually the largest uh, college police force in the state of Virginia. Those police force, uh, those police officers, their jurisdiction is solely VCU's campus. And so basically they know the campus like the back of their hand. We have over 200 security personnel, including somebody who's in the residential hall 24-7. Um, making sure that students are able to check in and are safe. Um, we also uh, will have our ramp safe program in addition to the GRTC bus service. Um, the ramp safe program is a little bit different. It operates between the hours of 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. It is a shuttle service that will take you anywhere up to a mile off of campus. Um, and then we also do have our VCU mobile alerts. That is a text message service that will just kind of alert you if anything is um, going on around the Richmond area or around campus as well. And then in terms of that return on investment, um, I like to say 87% of our students will have an occupation or be in graduates in a graduate program within their major related field. Um, and then 87% of our students uh, will have participated in some form of experimental learning. Uh, what that basically means is research opportunities and kind of learning outside of the classroom. So those are really important and a big reason for those numbers is just kind of the research money that we do have, but also being right in the heart of the city. Uh, students really do take advantage of having just kind of the best of both worlds with the campus and city environment. There's a ton of opportunity for our students. But even though we are located right in Richmond, we like to say we are a campus with no boundaries. So what that basically does mean is we have a lot of different uh, satellite campuses. We're kind of located really throughout. 
Um, one really cool program, we actually have a School of the Arts located at Cutter. So if you are interested in that, uh, that is an actual ECU arts building uh, located there. And students, you can take semester long, year long, there's even week long seminars as well. We also have a very extensive study abroad program. Um, and we have with over a hundred different partnerships with universities um, just around the world. Our study abroad office is incredible. They will help you um, not only find a, um, uh, they will help you register for classes. They will help you with scholarship opportunities and they will just kind of help you make that dream of studying abroad more of a reality. Um, and so that is the last slide, but I do want to talk about a couple of other things just to cover very quickly. In terms of COVID, um, we are on campus. Uh, we do have a hybrid plan, plan for a lot of our classes, which basically mean a lot of our classes you might be um, in a classroom one week and then taking classes online the next week. And that is just to maintain those social distance requirements. Um, we do have the option to go online for, I believe, all of our programs as well. Um, so that is something that really does help us control uh, just kind of what is going on. In terms of living on campus, it is not a requirement for our students to live on campus. However, we do encourage it, especially the first year. Um, about 86% of our students our first year, their first year do live on campus traditionally. However, um, if you would rather commute to campus um, or if you are want to have an apartment that is just kind of located near campus, that is an option as well. We are again located right in the heart of the city, uh, so that helps our students there. Um, in terms of meal plans, uh, we do have meal plans um, and the, we do have dining services and you can just kind of, that would be a swipe based system. Um, we have a main on-campus dining hall. We also have partnerships with multiple restaurants in the university that will either take meal swipes or Ram Bucks, which is basically something that you would upload on your freshman ID and utilize that in the restaurants across the university. So I am going to actually stop sharing my screen here and I will get to some of the questions that you all have. I do see one here, question here, what makes VCU special? I absolutely love this question. So in terms of what makes VCU special, it is, there's not very many universities where, um, that are located right in the heart. There's some, but there are not very many universities that are located right in the heart of the city. Richmond is the perfect place because it is not just a college town, it is its own separate entity, but it works so well and VC works so well within the community. Um, our students are members of this community. It is something that's really cool. And it's really cool for me personally because I've grown up within the Richmond, uh, uh, Richmond Virginia area my whole life to really see um, VC be a special part of it. Um, but just the opportunity that our students do have here with having a um, personalized uh, just kind of environment, a personalized classroom environment, the smaller classes, uh, the amount of staff here as well to help our students but still be a part of a large community with a lot of research funding and all of that good stuff. It really does make VC very special for our students. We do have a uh, physical therapy program. So coming in your undergraduate, you'll be a pre on the pre-physical therapy track. And usually you would major, uh, you can major in anything, but tends to be say biology or somewhere within the science fields, just because those programs do translate over very well. Um, 
And while on that pre-physical therapy track, you will have pre-health advisors that will give you the requirements, basically give you the keys, tell you what to do to get into medical school. And then they will also, um, you will also be taking classes to prepare you for medical school as well. So we have a great physical therapy program. We also have a grad or a, um, a program within our medical school, and I believe that is ranked the 20th in the country. So we do have a really good program there. Um, and then I do see what are some traditions. What some tra what are some of the traditions? Sorry about that. Uh, that I do have that you do have at VCU. Um, my favorite one is, and obviously uh, COVID has impacted a, a little bit, but our um, student band, uh, the Peppas, uh, they actually will march down West Broad Street, one of the larger streets in the Richmond area, um, during the start of the school year. So that is something that is very cool. Uh, to witness and a lot of students get very excited to see them. Um, we don't have an interior design program. Um, uh, we do have a lot of different types of art programs and so there is something that uh, you might be able to find that is equivalent to it. And my recommendation with finding a program is it's an awesome website but um, if you Google search major maps VCU, you can actually look at all of the different programs that VCU does have to offer. You can even search by bachelor level job titles and graduate level job titles. So uh, say if you want to be something in the future, you can uh, look that up and they will give you a degree plan. Now keep in mind, you will also have an academic advisor once you do enroll into VCU that will help you with that degree plan as well. But that is just something that you can utilize now if you want to. Um, let's see, are there any other questions here? Oh, thank you for including that as well, Randy. I love these questions, by the way. Thank you guys so much. All right. So are there any restaurants you would recommend? Oh my goodness. In terms of eating, Richmond, Virginia, we were voted the sixth best place to eat. Um, so there are plenty of different restaurants I would recommend. Um, a couple of them that are located within the vicinity of campus. Um, Empanada, Empanada, I might be pronouncing that wrong. Um, it is actually I'm not a vegan or vegetarian, but it is a vegan vegetarian restaurant. It is amazing. It is really uh, something that the food owners do care about. There's also a grilled cheese uh, restaurant that's located across from campus. I believe it's called Bodilla's. Um, also incredible. They do have a food truck and their food trucks are a very big part of uh, Richmond just kind of culture. I'd see some other ones, it's within driving distance. Um, now there's plenty of others within walking distance that aren't just coming to my head right now, but within driving distance. Uh, Sabai, it's an excellent Thai food restaurant. Stella's is voted one of the best Greek restaurants in the country. It's a little fancier, but if you do wanna uh, go out on a fancy, um, just kind of, uh, for a fancy dinner, that is about a 10 minute drive away. And um, there, there's a ton of restaurants, honestly, uh, um, that you would find that are within walking distance again from campus or just a short drive away. Um, there is gonna be a fee waiver 
in my app in the application and actually on the common application it will list the requirements for the fee waiver the most um, frequent fee waiver that we do see is uh, students that do qualify via their school but there are other requirements in order to maintain those uh, are in order to be eligible for a fee waiver and all of those you will find on the common application Any other uh, questions here? If you guys have any last minute questions, you can still feel free um, to put those down, but I'm going to go ahead and close this out if there's any, not anything else, but again, feel free um, to continue to put your questions in. Yeah, and I just wanted to thank you guys so much for having me here and um, just allowing me to uh, share this information with you. Okay, but again, thank you guys for joining us today um, for this session presented by CACRO. Um, please know that at, after we close out this webinar, there will be a short four question survey. Um, so if you're able to fill that out, we would greatly appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Um, also, again, this is just one of many sessions um, that are being hosted. Um, so you can definitely feel free to sign up for any more that you're interested in. Um, if you go to CACRO.org, um, you can actually see all the different institutions and what they're presenting on as well. Um, in about a week, you will be able to find this session's recording, um, so as well as all the other session recordings as well, if you'd like to view it again. And again, it's going to be um, capro.org. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much, um, and I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Brandy, too, for helping me out there. All right, you're welcome. I didn't think I did much, but I'm glad that I was able to participate okay. or attend today. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I had a quick question about one o'clock. So that's a whole separate session. Um, so, um, and I, I can kind of go over that with you a little bit later on. It's kind of different. Um, you're just going to log in on each Zoom meeting and counselors will come in um, and try to log in there as well. Yesterday, I was logged in on a Zoom meeting. No counselor showed up, but I, I suspect that Greensboro and uh, Raleigh will be a little bit. Yeah. Different. yeah. All righty. All right. Well, if you need me, I'm here. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, y'all. I'm going to end it. You too. Thank you.